Chapter 4. Synthesis and Constraint Entry. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, the basic constraint creation flow using lattice radiant will be presented. Chapter 4 consists of five sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Constraint Basics, the general flow for constraint creation with radiant is discussed. In section 2 of the chapter, Creating LDC and SDC Constraints with Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, Radiant's Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints. In Section 3 of Chapter 4, called Running Synthesis, Radiant's Task Detail View and Process Toolbar are discussed, as well as how they can be used to run the project flow for a Radiant project. In the fourth section of the chapter, Lattice Radiant Reports, we will discuss Radiant's generated reports. Finally, in the fifth section of the chapter, using Netlist Analyzer, we will introduce Radiance Netlist Analyzer and how it can be used to analyze a design synthesized netlist. Chapter 4, Section 1 Constraint Basics. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing the general flow for creating constraints for a Radiant project. Additionally, we will also be reviewing the basics of synthesis tool selection and how constraint files can be managed. The figure on the slide depicts the general constraint creation flow using Radiant. As can be seen from the example, there are three different types of pre-synthesis constraint files that can be used in Radiant projects. The main difference between these three files are the synthesis engines that they can be used with. The table on the slide depicts which synthesis engines are compatible with which constraint file types. As can be seen from the table, LDC constraint files can only be used by the LSE synthesis engine, and FDC constraint files can only be used by Simplify Pro. The third type of pre-synthesis constraint file, SDC, can be used by either synthesis engine. A useful feature of Radiant is that there are several ways pre-synthesis timing constraint files can be created. Radiant's pre-synthesis timing constraint editor can be used to generate LDC or SDC pre-synthesis timing constraint files. One important thing to remember is that the pre-synthesis timing constraint editor is not required to create timing constraint files. And that LDC, SDC, and FDC constraint files can also be imported to a project or created from scratch. Once synthesis has been run, the next step in the constraint creation flow is to create post-synthesis timing and physical constraints. At this point, it doesn't matter what type of pre-synthesis constraint file was used, as post-synthesis constraints are only used for the map and place and route processes. Another useful feature of Radiant is that there are several ways PDC post-synthesis constraint files can be generated. Post-synthesis timing constraints can be generated using the post-synthesis timing constraint editor tool. Additionally, post-synthesis physical constraints can also be created using Radiant's device constraint editor and physical designer tools. Similar to pre-synthesis constraint files, users can also import or create their own PDC post-synthesis constraint files. Once a post-synthesis constraint file has been added, the final few steps in the constraint development flow are to run map for the project and then place and route the design. Now that we've covered the general flow for creating constraints in Radiant, we are going to review synthesis tool selection. As mentioned in the previous slide, the active synthesis tool has a significant impact on the pre-synthesis constraint flow, so it is important users understand the basics of synthesis tool selection. The active synthesis tool for a project is selected during project creation, however, users can also modify their selection later on. One important thing to remember is that the active synthesis tool is unique for each implementation. What this means is that if there are multiple implementations in a project, Modifying one implementation synthesis tool selection will not impact any of the other implementations. With that said, to switch the active synthesis tool for a project, right-click the name of the active implementation in the file list tab. From the drop-down that appears, select the option called Select Synthesis Tool. Doing this will open the Project Settings window. In the window that appears, locate the field called Synthesis Tool and use its drop-down to select a different synthesis tool. To confirm the changes made in this window, click the OK button in the bottom right. The synthesis tool for the selected implementation will be updated. The last thing we are going to discuss in this section is the process for managing constraint files. For each project implementation, 
there can only be one active pre-synthesis and post-synthesis constraint file. The active constraint file for a project can easily be switched using Radiance File List tab. To switch the active constraint file for an implementation, right-click the name of the constraint file. From the drop-down that appears, select Set as Active. Doing this will set the selected constraint file as active, and set all other constraint files as inactive. As can be seen in the figure at the bottom of the screen, the new active constraint file is in bold, indicating that it is active, and the previous active constraint file is in gray, indicating it is inactive. One important thing to note, is that the same process can be repeated on an active file, to set it as inactive. Doing this will make it so there are no active constraint files in a project. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 4.2, Creating LDC and SDC Constraints with Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor.